Let's talk about housing. Eight years ago, when the city of Portland required new apartment buildings to set aside units for lower income folks, many saw that as a big win for something called inclusionary housing. Now that term means pretty much what it sounds like. Instead of letting high prices exclude lower income folks from nice neighborhoods, inclusionary housing makes room for them by forcing developers to include lower income folks. They do that by offering lower rent units right next to the market rate units when they put up their new buildings in those nice fancy neighborhoods. So is Portland's inclusionary housing program working? A new report from the Portland City Auditor says mm, basically not really. First, some background. Back in 2015, the city of Portland declared a one year housing state of emergency. Portland's housing was not keeping up with a growing population, leaving a shortage estimated at 23,000 units. And that, of course, drove prices up. So in 2017, the city launched a new rule. It required builders who were putting up 20 or more units, apartments, to include 10 to 20 percent of those in low and moderate income households. The program was designed for market rate residential buildings that would otherwise not have it. OK, sounds pretty straightforward so far. You got to make room for lower income folks in your fancy new apartment buildings going up in safe neighborhoods with good schools and parks and things like that. Developers, they didn't love it. They grumbled about it, but the city insisted it was the right thing to do. So developers basically had no choice. The program had four stated goals. First, it would increase the number of housing units available for people making 80% or less of the area median income. Now I just checked and currently that's $90,240 for a family of four. It also wanted to emphasize households earning 60% or less of the area median income, which is currently $67,680 for that same family of four. Second, leaders wanted to responsibly allocate resources to increase housing opportunities for families and individuals facing the greatest disparities. And then third, create affordable housing options in high opportunity neighborhoods, places with access to good schools, services and transportation. And then fourth, promote a wide range of affordable housing when it came to size, amenities and location. OK, still with me back in 2017, the city of Portland wanted affordable housing spread out into the nice neighborhoods and they forced builders to start including some affordable units in their new projects right next to the fully priced units. But when it comes to the goals that we just reviewed, did you notice anything odd about those? None of them have specific metrics that would allow you to judge whether the program is actually working or not. Well, the Portland City auditors working for Portland's elected auditor, Simone Reed, they definitely spotted that and they were highly critical. That's Reed, by the way, in the picture there. They found the goals were not effective performance measurement tools and did not accurately convey the program's purpose. They went on. The goals were not specific to the program or realistic. And these goals do not indicate the amount of housing the program aims to create. Also, we did not know if the number and location of inclusionary housing units produced through the program were evidence of success. And bureau managers said that by requiring the private market to build 60 and 80 percent MFI housing, the program frees up money it can use to finance housing for lower income households. However, the bureau does not track how inclusionary housing has increased those opportunities. So I got to tell you, when I read that, I thought, wow, that is pretty damning for a program the city was darn proud to create. That's basically the auditors saying you created a program with no firm goals that can be measured. Now, there is some good news in the audit. Let's look at that for a moment. The auditors found that over the past six years, 566 apartments in the inclusionary program had been built and another 1,157 are on the way. And as this chart shows, there are more of those units targeting the 60% range than the 80% range. And the auditors found that 68% of the housing was indeed located in high opportunity neighborhoods, meaning, you know, the nice ones. But if you want to include low income people in the mix, well, hmm, the plan failed. The auditors point out that the units were created for those with moderate incomes, not Portlanders facing the greatest economic disparities. So how's it all work? Well, the program offers developers incentives to include the lower income units. But if the developers really don't want to do that, 
they can just pay a fee and get out of it. And between 2017 and 2023, developers did. They paid $5 million to not bother with the low-income units. So what, you might ask, did the city do with that $5 million? Well, the auditors report that the money was supposed to help pay for more affordable housing development and preservation. What a great idea. Yeah. Well, instead, the fees have gone to the program operating cost. Oh, yes, it did. Other problems include the maximum rent that owners could charge for studios, one, two, and three bedroom apartments for people at the 80% level. Well, the auditors found that was already higher than the average market rent that was being charged citywide. And because owners can require renters to show that they make at least two and a half times the rent, black and Latinx renters were sometimes excluded even though they qualified based on income and could afford the rent, but they did not make it to that second green line there, which was the two and a half times the rent. Auditors also found that most owners and managers of the new buildings did not have experience leasing affordable housing, but the city shoved the responsibility for running the programs onto them, onto the property owners. The auditors also found the Bureau cannot effectively detect and consistently address compliance problems why? Well, because it's two years behind in reviewing and testing compliance data. They also report that 12 different three-bedroom apartments, which made up 23% of the three-bedroom units built under this new program, well, they sat vacant for more than a year, and another 11 were vacant between four and 10 months. But guess what? The Housing Bureau did not know that because it was not monitoring the new inclusionary units. And there is more, but you get the idea. So. How did the leaders of the Housing Bureau respond? I want to show you two different examples here because to me it does not seem to suggest an agency that's willing to take advice and grow. Here's an example. The city's housing commissioner, Carmen Rubio, and the director of the Portland Housing Bureau wrote, the audit acknowledges the implementation of the IH, that's inclusionary housing, permit, review process, tracking of permit data, and restricting properties with appropriate covenants to ensure compliance has been done successfully. But the auditor said, uh, that's not what we said. And they wrote, outside of testing the reliability of the spreadsheet the Bureau used to track information about buildings and inclusionary housing permits described in the next section, our audit did not examine or draw conclusions in these areas. And here's another example. The city responded to another part of the audit by stating, furthermore, the audit clarifies that additional funding is needed for PHB, that's Portland Housing Bureau, to provide the market rate developers with more educational information and support. And again, the auditor said, no, that's not what we said. The auditor response is, our audit did not review how the Bureau allocates its budget or whether there are efficiencies that could free up funding for program administration, including property owner education and support. And as a result, our audit did not make conclusions about program funding. Now I know, that is a lot to take in. But I think it's important because this is really a major program that's shaping building and developing that's going on in our city right now. The auditors found that new housing is being built, not for the poorest folks, but for the middle income folks in the Portland area. And also that there is lots that can be done to make the program better. As we look for solutions, as we often do now, I think we can point to the city of Portland auditors as a group of solution makers. They take the time, they have the tools to really test whether programs like these are working, and we should all thank them for audits like this. And when programs are struggling like this one clearly is, those auditors give it new guideposts to get it back on track. Now, let's just hope the housing folks are listening.